Four friends Pat, Sam, Reese, and Tiger wake up in their van. They're part of the punk rock band The Ain't Rights. They slept all night with the engine on. Pat and Sam ride a bike to a nearby parking lot and siphon some gas to get them back on the road. The band meets up with a guy named Tad for an interview in his apartment for his radio program. He asks the band what their desert island band would be. Reese, Sam, and Tiger think of theirs, but Pat can't. After the interview, the band plays a gig, but their pay is barely decent split between the four of them. Tad tells the band that he got them to do a gig in a spot where his cousin works, and that the pay is better. Arriving at the venue, the band is met with an unsettling atmosphere, realizing it's a skinhead bar. They encounter Tad's cousin Daniel, portrayed by Mark Webber, amidst the chaotic setting. To their dismay, they discover that the managers misspelled their band name as the Aren't Rights, adding insult to injury. Their choice of Nazi punks fuck off as a cover incites hostility from the crowd, worsening an already tense situation. Transitioning to another song, the band's performance continues to falter, met with a lukewarm reception at best, heightening the palpable tension between them and the hostile audience. After the show, the band gets their money and is about to head out. Sam forgot her phone in the green room and Pat goes to get it. When he enters, he sees two people, Worm and Amber, standing over the body of Amber's friend Emily, dead with a knife in her head. Pat freaks out and runs out of the room while calling 911. Two bouncers, Big Justin and Gabe, force Sam, Reese and Tiger into the room. Their phones get taken away while Justin holds them all at gunpoint. As the officer arrives, Gabe swiftly orchestrates a confrontation between the two young skinheads, manipulating them to stab each other, adding chaos to the scene. Darcy, the club's owner portrayed by Patrick Stewart, arrives with a stern demeanor, recognizing the severity of the situation. He asserts that the band responsible must be addressed promptly. With tension escalating, the urgency to resolve the escalating violence grows, setting the stage for a critical turning point in the narrative, where decisions made will have lasting consequences. The band attacks Justin and takes his gun, with Reese pinning him down and threatening to break his arm. They let him up and Reese holds the gun at him this time. The club experiences a power outage, inciting a brief panic among the group until Amber turns on her lighter and sparks up a cigarette, which she gives to Justin and tells the band to watch the cherry in case of anything suspicious. The lights then go back on. Darcy stands outside the green room to calmly discuss with the band how to handle the situation. They agree to hand over the gun but keep the bullets. Pat still remains suspicious as Darcy says the cops have come and gone. Pat gets ready to hand Darcy the gun outside the room, as Darcy claims there is nobody else with him. This proves to be a lie when Amber sees another pair of feet through the vents. Before she can warn him, Reese tries to attack Darcy with a rod while Pat's arm gets slammed and cut up horribly. Reese pins Justin back down and snaps his arm, then places him in a chokehold until he passes out. Amber finishes him off by cutting him open with a box cutter. While Darcy and the skinheads plan to get rid of them, the group starts to break through the floorboards for a way out. This leads them to a bunker where the skinheads run a heroin operation. There's no exit down there, so the group returns to the room. Tiger helps wrap Pat's arm in duct tape. With no other options, the group plans to make a run for it while arming themselves with some kind of weapon. Tiger and Reese run out, but Tiger gets his throat ripped out by a pit bull and Reese gets stabbed to death. Pat, Amber, and Sam have to stay in the room. Daniel and Gabe go to the room, where Amber tells Daniel that Worm killed Emily when Worm learns that Emily is going to run away with Daniel, and now Darcy is going to pin her murder on the band. Daniel guides the three downstairs to get some guns, but Daniel gets a buckshot to the face, courtesy of a skinhead. Pat kills the skinhead with a machete. The three run outside with a shotgun, facing the skinheads. Darcy tells them not to shoot at Amber. Sam gets shot in the leg and is then mauled by the pit bull. Returning to the room, Pat and Amber find themselves enveloped by fear and exhaustion. Seeking solace, Pat recounts a tale from his past, a paintball tournament where he faced overwhelming odds, drawing parallels to their current predicament. As they reflect, a glimmer of determination emerges. Together, they devise a survival strategy, 
pooling their wits and resourcefulness to navigate the perilous situation. Amidst their apprehension, a newfound sense of resolve takes root, propelling them forward with a shared determination to overcome adversity and emerge triumphant against the odds stacked against them. Darcy sends two skinheads into the green room to kill Pat and Amber. They find Pat yelling nonsensically, now with his head shaved and his face with black paint on it. He hops into the bunker, and one skinhead follows. The other skinhead sits above keeping watch, unaware of Amber hiding on the couch. She crawls out and slits the skinhead's throat with the box cutter. The first skinhead looks for Pat with his shotgun. Amber distracts him by throwing the bodies of Emily, Justin, and the second skinhead down. Pat seizes the chance to grab the skinhead's gun, but they fight for it. Amber descends with the gun of the skinhead she killed and shoots the other one dead. As Pat and Amber ascend to the room, Gabe's remorse weighs heavily upon him. He expresses a desire to face the consequences, seeking redemption through incarceration. However, Pat and Amber, fueled by a mixture of distrust and self-preservation, forcibly expel him from the room at gunpoint. With dawn breaking, they depart the club, leaving Gabe to fend for himself. While Pat and Amber disappear into the surrounding woods, Gabe's solitary quest for a phone begins, each step forward laden with the weight of his actions and the uncertain road ahead. The two come across Darcy, along with two other skinheads, trying to dispose of Sam, Tiger, and Reese's bodies, trying to come up with another story while also planning to blow up their van by putting a burning rag in the tank. Pat and Amber find them and shoot the henchmen. Darcy attempts to walk away as he draws his gun, but he is shot dead as well. Pat and Amber sit down as they wait for the police to arrive. They spot the pit bull, who walks calmly and lies by his owner. Pat then tells Amber he figured out his desert island band. Amber says to tell someone who gives a shit. The movie ends here. Thanks for watching.